Okay, the caching is now done. Um, before I move on to the next part, which is importing it into Blender, I want to show you that um, that is based on this tutorial by Jonathan Krohn. I will leave a link in the description. You can uh, download the uh, Blender, which has volume VDB import functionality from Blender.community Graphical. And you need to select Windows if you are Windows or um, I don't know about Mac, um, but again, this tutorial will tell you information uh, about Mac. Uh, for Windows, you go to New Object, yeah, you can select that and um, click on New Object Types Windows 64 Daily Build and download it from here. Okay. Okay, I'm in Blender now. I'm going to delete this box and Shift A, Volume, Import Open VDB. I've just imported the uh, VDB sequence I created. Let me change that to 48, start to end. Go to view, view all, so you can tell. All right, but it's, it's in the wrong direction. So you click on Pyro, um, rotate X 90. So it's right there and middle click to uh, rotate or um, in Blender. And so we got this right here. So we just get shift and then move it like that. And I'm just gonna maybe put it here like that. I'm gonna zoom out a little, okay. Good, and I'm going to change this light to sunlight, and I'm going to um, rotate it a little bit. Okay, that looks better. I'm going to go into the active camera, and I'm going to press N, go to view, and lock camera to view. And then I'm just going to move out and adjust it where it suits that looks good all right okay and go in and uncheck lock view camera okay right so the next step is to go in pyro and click on this here and press return once you press return you'll get this which is good and then go into pyro again and let's um, create a new branch here and we will change this to shading, shader editor, and create new. And it automatically generates based on, obviously you gotta make sure you you have this clicked, okay? Pyro one. Uh, once this comes up, go into uh, another one. Density, change this to initially 20, I guess. Uh, emission strength um, to one. Black body intensity to 4000 and temperature to 4000 and change the temperature attribute to heat. Okay, and go into uh, this uh, render settings, change the render engine to cycles. If you got GPU, change it to GPU, uh, which is good. And let's just uh, go through one by one here. Um, change it to open EXR multi layer under here and float full. Okay, and go to this one, which is the um, passes and volume direct emission. Okay, let me just go back in here. Right, um, volumes I change the max steps to 2048. Just give it a lot more calculations but obviously you can leave it at 1024 if you like um go to film check on transparent and then uh, color management srgb if you want to change this you can so okay that's about it all right i'm just going to save this just before i lose it all right good so let me just Zoom in here and press Z and go to rendered. 
and suddenly you see this, what is that? Okay, I had this problem and then uh, it took a little bit of time to figure out. So, change the strength of the sun to one, let's say. Make sure you click on power one, go to emission color, and oops, change this to black. There you go, now that's much better. Before you change the um, frames, make sure you come out of the rendered mode because it's crashed quite a few times on me. The 40 maybe. Look at that. That looks sweet. Look at that. Just get out of here for a second. <clears throat> Obviously, you can adjust how, uh, you know, this to your taste, you know, whatever you want. So, uh, for example, you can change the temperature to 8,000. It'll be much more, much hotter looking, at least. Uh, 4,000. Yeah, maybe, you know what, 6,000 would do, I think. All right, perfect. Thirty-five. Yeah, I think that looks pretty sweet. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, render this and move on. Okay. Okay, the uh, rendering is done, and you can see here. Uh, this is in the uh, compositing viewer here, and if I Click on that and Control Shift. Click again. It comes up with another image, and it's just a denoised image. And um, I think you will see the difference around here. So right there, you can see a lot of noise, and it's that uh, there is no noise here. Okay, so um, before I continue with this, I uh, forgot to show you the uh, playbook that I wanted to um, uh, compare. Okay, so here uh, is the original shelf tool that we created um, at the start of the tutorial or start of the run through. And here's the new one. So you can tell there's a significant difference and this looks much punchy and um, a lot better. And I wanna go through some more items here that I missed out before the render, so. So first one is, let me just uh, go through here and under performance, I changed the tiles to 128 because it's a GPU compute. Um, so the next one, right, just around here, right? So this open EXR multi-layer is not actually working on the um, image viewer. You can see that it's just doing that. I have no idea why. Okay, but it does work in Blender. I will show you another application shortly where it will also work. So the next thing is here. By default, this Z is checked. Make sure you uncheck this because if not, it also causes issues. Um, I've uh, checked the denoising here and I've also um, selected direct and emission as before. Okay, and I did a render um, before checking denoising. Then I did another render uh, with denoising checked and that's why you see these two files right here. If I go into shading, um, let me just change this back. Let me go to the layout. Um, no, shading is good, shading is good. Right here, do you remember I said that the mission strength is one and you will have this issue with the emission color. Um, I was wrong, you just leave it at zero emission strength. It doesn't matter, which means you don't need to um, adjust the color. Um, I also adjusted the temperature at 4000 um, and I took the volume, where is that? Um, there, that one back to 1024, okay? All right, so we're gonna now move on to another application okay this is a software called natron and uh, if you google search 
natron.fr, you will find a link to it. And I'm sure you know how to navigate to download the latest files. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open the recent project that I worked on uh, to, um, to get the result. And obviously it's throwing errors because uh, it doesn't have those files anymore. So I'm just going to go and uh, reset those files. Okay, so here it is. Uh, now if I run this through. There you go. That looks really sweet. Um, sorry, just give me one second. Let me set this up. Okay, there you go. Just going to choose one frame and I'm going to explain what's going on here. Right, so first of all, uh, Natron is a free open source software, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, this is a fantastic software, it's pretty close to Nuke. So, anyway, so this uh, first layer here is just the uh, emission layer. The second layer here is volume um, layer, which we enabled in uh, Blender. The next thing, what I'm doing to the emission layer is adding some glow, and I'm sure you can. Um, work this out, uh, you know, and then I'm adding these two by using a merge layer. Uh, if you don't know much about the software, you could click on tab and uh, let's say type glow, it'll come up with glow. If you type merge, it'll come up with merge, just like Houdini. Um, and then I did a color correction uh, here, and then um, I did a color suppression, and then I used film convert nitrate. Uh, this is a uh, one of my favorite software because uh, uh, it is so awesome that I use it almost in every single project of mine. Anyway, so um, it's unfortunately paid though. So if you don't have it, it doesn't matter. But if you have it, mm -hmm. go ahead and use it. It's uh, it's fantastic. Right? Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Right? Okay. Um, so pretty important things to mention. Um, I've used Rec 709 as my color space. It defaults to sRGB. Uh, Rec 709 has much more a, a contrast look.